folks and for joining me on a bit of a walk stroke run in the countryside around the WTF. It's, uh, it's quite a nice day actually, though it looks a bit cloudy, it was even better. So uh, we're not too far from the uh, from the headquarters and uh, I'm just going to just talk about the latest video and the project that we'd, we just well just about completed. So you may remember that uh, a couple of videos ago I have <coughs> started dabbling in receivers. So this uh, latest project is a superhead which despite being a radio amateur for many years and haven't been doing a lot of homebrew. I've never really uh, built a home uh, homebrew superhead. I've done I've done uh, repairs on uh, radio superhead radios, but not uh, built one from scratch. So the project we've got on the table back home is a uh, what is it? It's about 11 valve superhead radio, and I got this design from uh, Mike Bond's website, Octomania. And uh, Mike's done a lot of work, homebrew stuff. He's quite a homebrew wizard, actually. And I urge, if you're interested in homebrew radios and stuff, let's have a look at his website. I'll try and see if I can get a link up at the end of the video at the bottom. But his uh, website's very interesting. Lots of uh, homebrew projects that he's done. And he's taken the time to put schematics and a lot of technical information so I think it's well worth uh, a visit if you're into that sort of thing anyway uh, I used Mike's uh, design which was a what he calls an Octomania 80 meter SSB receiver superhead and so I basically based my super on his design which um, I did have some problems with trying to get it to work, like all these things. And uh, I know uh, Mike, if, uh, well, I emailed Mike about a couple of things to try and get it to sort out. And I actually did eventually get it to work and I did make a few modifications, which I'll, I'll show you in a minute. But Mike, if you're watching this, uh, uh, many thanks for all the uh, advice and uh, I did manage to get it eventually to work. But um, I think overall it's come out quite nicely actually. I'm going to give it, when we get back, we'll give you a bit of a demonstration of it working. Anyway, uh, while we're here, enjoy the view. We're actually looking uh, due, due east actually. And the WTF actually, the headquarters is actually between that hill that you can see propping out and then there's a bit of a valley but I'll quickly show you again when we uh, head on back so we'll make after this walk we'll make our way back to the shack and we'll show you the receiver so this is the uh, circuit diagram that I use for my superhead and I have to credit uh, Mike Bon um, KG7 Tango Romeo uh, for this circuit and if you want to further information you can just go to his website uh, if you just type in Octal Mania. Uh, Mike's done a lot of interesting stuff with Octal tubes uh, and he's a, a really uh, uh, homebrew uh, wizard I would say. He's done some really fantastic projects so have a, have a look and you can get all the information you need. Uh, so I, I did make a few modifications to this circuit uh, just to uh, go through a few things. First of all, obviously this this is designed for 80 meters. Uh, I've actually added um, I've actually added a couple more bands so it covers 80, 40, and 30, and also uh, a few of the broadcast bands as well, which are sort of within those regions. Um, the other thing that I changed was this is a product detector. This uh, 12 J5 or or six uh, J5 is what I use. All the heaters was all the valves I use were six uh, volt heaters. Uh, so uh, 
I've changed this to a standard um, a triode, double diode uh, detector. I've used a 6SQ7 rather than this, so I can listen to AM. Um, but uh, uh, there you go. And also the BFO I've changed slightly because I didn't have a crystal. I've just used tuned circuits for that. And uh, that's more or less it. Those are the main changes I made. I didn't use this uh, frequency uh, uh, Arduino based frequency counter. I use one of those Chinese things that you can uh, enter the uh, uh, IF as an offset, uh, which works quite well. It's a programmable thing. They only cost about, oh, I think I paid about four pounds for them from AliExpress, and you know they're very cheap and they work quite well. It saves you uh, messing around with Arduinos. And the other change I made as well is I didn't use solid state diodes here. I used um, uh, a GZ34 uh, rectifying tube. So if you want more information about this, uh, as I said, check out Mike's website. Um, just put in Oxalmania and you'll find uh, all his uh, projects, of uh, which there are many. And, uh, <clears throat> and also further information about this um, circuit diagram. Anyway, let's show you this, the rig itself, the, in, uh, the top and the bottom, and then we'll give you some demos of it uh, in action. Well, here we are guys, back in the shack after that nice brisk walk. And this is my latest creation, a three band super het, which uh, can receive SSB, CW, AM, and it's got a digital display it, uh, it's got a number of filters from 300 Hertz to 15 kilohertz some of which work better than others and it's got provision for headphones an external speaker and generally quite good that's the top part of it you can see the IF cans that's the pre-selector and the tuning. A little transistorized preamp there, which also is useful. Uh, power supply, and that's it. So we're going to give you, show you. I'll show you the underneath, and we will also give you a demonstration of it in action. So this is the underneath of the receiver, and what I've tried to do is compartmentalize it which I think you have to do for uh, receivers uh, especially super heads where you've got local oscillators preamps um, IF amplifier stages and all that type of thing so for instance here you've got the little compartment for the pre-selector and then most of this here is for the IF stage uh, so that's the filter select switch and I'm, I'm using a combination of those crystal filters that I showed you and also these these are two little ceramic filters for the 6 kilohertz and 15 kilohertz uh, which don't cost very much actually you can buy those uh, off eBay quite easily and they're only, they're only a couple of quid uh, so they're quite good for you building receivers and stuff and then The two boxes there, one's for the uh, part of the pre-selector coils and then we've also got the local oscillator coils in there and most of the local oscillator is all down here and then up on this part of the chassis uh, where are there, there's a choke which you can see there uh, which is for the power supply obviously and then um, in this little corner here tucked away we've got most of the audio uh, stages and that's more or less it really it looks a bit of a rat's nest um, <laughs> it's uh, I, I guess with, with this sort of thing you've got to sort of cram it all in um, I think in retrospect, what what would I've done differently underneath? Uh, probably would have used die-cast boxes rather than these aluminium things. And uh, these coils, I mean, obviously it's a multi-band rig, so 
these coil enclosures do get a bit uh, a bit difficult. I think in retrospect it might have been better to put if you get like little cans from IF transformers and mount the oscillator coils in there uh, might have been better. But um, yeah, in retrospect it's a lot easier. But th but this was fairly easy to do it like this with these um, uh, sort of cheap aluminium boxes uh, sort of screwed onto the chassis. So there we go. That's the uh, the underneath. One of the things that uh, <clears throat> I wanted to do when I built this uh, receiver was just general to have a bit of, sort of general shortwave listening capability. Uh, so that's the reason why I um, added on 30 meters. Now it will um, it just about covers the 10 megahertz amateur radio band, which um, is mostly digital and CW, which uh, I do use quite often on the main rig, but. I um, <clears throat> I wanted to include the the um, one of the main shortwave uh, broadcast bands, which is about from let me see about nine point four to nine point nine or thereabouts uh, megahertz, because um, there's always quite a lot of interesting stations on there, and uh, uh, you know you never know what you might hear. Anyway, so what I've done is I've um, I've tuned it in actually. I've got the volume down. We can have a quick listen to some of these. Um, in bizarre uh, AM stations that you sometimes hear uh, on um, around about this. It's not quite dark yet, uh, so um, probably not the optimal time to listen, but anyway, we'll have a quick peruse. The agency was also allowed to install many more surveillance cameras at Iranian sites. The IEA's inspections in Iran account for over a quarter of all agencies monitoring it. Must be some Iranian uh, radio station there. I've got the 6 kilohertz filter in. That's the 15 kilohertz, so I'll put leave on the 6 kilohertz filter. That's with the preamp out. You probably don't need the preamp actually in for those these stations. We got some we got some rag chewers on it on the eighty meters here. This is with the um, 3.2 kilohertz filter in. I'm tending to use the preamp with this filter in because I do get some attenuation with the filter. The that don't sounds not too bad. Okay, guys. Um, well, I've got my receiver set up here, and I've got my homebrew transmitter as well. And uh, it's um, it's seven o'clock this morning, and uh, it's going to be the three six one five VMARS AM net shortly. So uh, it's a good opportunity to test out the um, the setup. So what we've got here now is a completely homebrew uh, station. Uh, I'll just turn up the gain here. We've got, we've got Ray uh, G3 BTD uh, talking at the moment on. So this is AM that we're listening to. Uh, and it does AM, this receiver does AM quite nicely actually. Uh, we kicked off about 613, conditions are absolutely superb. Um,
Heavy wheat carrier. I think there was a bit of mud, but not readable here. So uh, we'll leave gaps uh, uh, if uh, that station wishes to join us. And Jess, uh, uh, G3BTD and one pb 3 bus for the day, for the sake of my licensing conditions. And uh, yes, uh, uh, I, I was thinking a uh, quarter past six of singing all by myself. <laughs> Um, we had um, a Mirage yesterday, a Raptor. Um, we had all manner of aircraft, Hercules, Chinooks, Augusta 1 and 9, uh, Irish Air Force training aircraft, and I don't know what it was, it was some kind of turbo prop. Beautiful looking machines here on display, uh, ready for tomorrow, and there'll be more coming today. I'll be here, Justin, and I'll catch you guys later from Golf Quebec Zero. Tango, Bravo, India. Cheers. Uh, GW0, FZY returning. Yep, OK, Stuart, all copied there. And uh, um, fine business on the um, on the air show there. Um, yes, um, funny you mentioned the Wasp, actually. I used to have an engine from one of those, a Rolls-Royce Nimbus. Uh, funny old things, those, uh, <laughs> those Nimbuses. Uh, very noisy, but um, but anyway... Um, you know, you're sounding good actually, you're coming through very nicely here, you're, you're 5 and 9 plus. Um, but uh, I've swapped aerials, um, so hopefully um, uh, you should, uh, should, everybody should be able to hear me a bit better. Um, uh, I've sort of tweaked the receiver and um, uh, everybody's coming through fine on the, uh, on the dipole now, so uh, no problems at all. Um, I think everybody's way over the 9 at the moment and uh, I think as Ray said that the uh, conditions actually... Uh, are pretty good uh, for the moment. Um, uh, just a quick message for you, Mike. I've sent you a um, sent you a quick video um, just to show you the um, what you sound like through the new trans uh, the new receiver. Uh, so um, it's um, coming through on WhatsApp. Uh, so uh, hopefully you should get that. Uh, what else? Uh, uh, I think people were mentioning um, <laughs> yeah a few political things. Uh, better not go there. <laughs> um, yeah. But, um, uh, it's uh, it's always a bit of a hot potato that one, isn't it? Anyway, um, I'll keep it uh, keep it short, keep it going round, and I think it goes back up to you then, Ray. Uh, hopefully you should uh, hopefully you should be uh, getting me a bit better. Uh, G three VTD in the group from G W zero F Z Y. Yeah, okay. Um, much uh, better with the uh, dipole now. Um, I've got the, uh, the rig, and uh, they sound to working okay. Um, I'm going to give it to the best with it, so don't worry it. Uh, it is a bit happy, but uh, uh, that's the critical report, and uh, I hope you don't mind it being critical. Um, it's, it could do just a little bit more body, so I presume from that a little bit better uh, LF response, but uh, it's perfectly readable. And um, if he came on with that, and that was the signal, nobody would um, nobody would complain. Just it sounds quite good. At the ten watts, anyway, it's um, it's exceptional. 